Hi guys, welcome back to Canary Class. Good to see you back here. Norwich City have got another signing confirmed. This time it's Billy Gilmore. Yeah, we've heard about it a while, but it's he's signed the dotted line. He is our player for the next year. Jacob, excited, mate? Yeah, I think this is a real coup. I think this is something yeah. that we probably should, yeah, talk a bit more in depth about. Like the player himself will will go on to obviously only 20 years old, <clears throat> played really well in the one Euro game he played against England. And when I've seen him, I thought really good manipulator of the ball. And it kind of made sense, the Tuchel Farker links, even before the start of the season. But I was surprised Chelsea have let him go because I think his level of ability, I don't want to try and big the lad up too much, but I think he could potentially be the best ball player midfielder we have, we ever see at Norwich. Really? Think, are you thinking he's going to be better than Skip already without having seen him in the Norwich shirt? Ball playing. Ball playing is okay. key. When I'm saying, I don't know if he'll have the ability that Skip had to play the amount of games mm. because he's, he's slightly slighter than, than Ollie Skip. So it'll be interesting to see how we use it there. But I'm looking at him almost like a Mario Vrancic with legs here. And I'm thinking Mario Vrancic was absolutely sublime. Not free kicks wise or set pieces, but just the, the kind of passes that he made, mm. defence splitting passes, which Gilmore can do. I think he's a little bit better on the ball than Skip. Like I say, physically, maybe not as much. I don't expect him to be the the destructor of the two. I could see that, especially with what we're going to talk about later with Stephen going. It looks more to me like potentially you could almost go, you either have Todd and Dow in the middle, mm. in the 10, or you have three midfielders this year. Yeah. And three central midfielders, Kenny, Gilmore, and hopefully Someone Skip, else. but one yeah. other. That could be a potential slight tweak in system. So you're not expecting Gilmore to come in and, and sort of perform the Skip role, the deep line playmaker, if you like. You think he'll be further forward? He's, he's, not, he's not a Skip who will mop up everything. He can do that. But he's not going to be a strong tackler. He's not He's not that kind of player. He's very silky, very classy. He can put a tackle in. You know, he's Scottish. He's got that mentality. He's not going to be, like, flimsy around or anything. But it will take him a little time to adjust to playing the amount of games that he will do. You're expecting at least 30 games from him this year. Injury, if he stays injury-free, obviously. And you're really looking at him as the kind of guy, like I say, to for me, to create the chances and really take the ball up the pitch and be able to manipulate it and be able to take it on and find those through balls to the likes of Rasitra and, well, again, we'll probably have to talk about it, zero right winger at the moment. But, um, yeah, I I would say he could be very, very good on the ball for Norwich City, no doubt. Yeah, in a footballing sense, it's exciting. I think it will be a good fit. But I think the best thing about this transfer for me, personally, is the fact that we've beaten off so much competition from mm. decent-sized clubs, you know, really decently-sized clubs. he's what... interested in us as well. Like, exactly. This is good that Tuchel and Farker are obviously friend, friends, and Tuchel would have pushed him and said, look, this is going to be great for your development. But Billy's also got to make that choice, hasn't he? And he's obviously looked at Skip last season and gone, yeah, wow, this guy is he was good before, but he's elevated himself to a level now where he's ready for Premier League football because of the platform Norwich have given him. And, and that will be the same for future, future loan signings, you'd hope. And whilst, obviously, we'd love permanent signings of this calibre, it's just with that way out of our league yeah. at the moment. And he could be a, a wonderful player to have in, in this league. I think it's great that clubs think that sending players on loan to Norwich is a great move now, because that hasn't been the case before. This is a relatively recent phenomenon. Um, but we are building quite a reputation for doing that now, aren't we? Well, yeah, you look at all the way back from the Angus Gunn signing, really. The first one that, that was from a big club that you're thinking, OK, let's see how this goes. Obviously, the emotional attachment kind of aside, he played well for those 46 games and well enough to get himself a £15 million move to Southampton. Yeah. I think people probably looked up, Patrick Roberts is probably the one that's really failed. But then yeah. do you question that mentality there? What was wrong Marcus with that? Marcus Edwards is the only Daniel other one. Far- can... Yeah, and Daniel Farker does well with those kind of players who you'd probably suggest potentially have a little bit of an ego because they are from a big club anyway and they are taking a, a mini step down to then go back up the ladder. Mm. But Daniel Farker develops them really well. And like I say, you, you could you could see that it's as soon as Ollie Skip went, Gilmore being touted out on loan, the two called Farker links, yeah. it just seemed too good not to be yeah. not, not to happen really. Yeah, I'm very excited about this one. I know you are too. But let's let's park Billy Gilmore there. That one's done. Someone else in the door. It's great news. A um, couple leaving this week as well that we should talk about because they've um, they've had a weird time at the club of late, but um, they were part of something quite big back in 1819. So we feel like we should talk about them. That's, of course, Mo Leitner and Marco Stiefman, whether Tom Tribal and, and Dermic follow suit. That could happen. But let's talk about Mo and, and Marco Jacob because um, they were crucial to well, Mo won promotion. Stiefman's got two to his name. So 
Let's um, let's give him some love. I think we'll say for Morris Snyder, and I think every fan of any other club he'll ever go to and has been at will be like, it's just such a shame because Ooh. on his day. He was magnificent, especially in that championship campaign where he was in that almost quarterback role. Metronome. Just yeah. picking it up, yeah. And then just being, and it was actually like almost football manager esque, wasn't it? Where he's just that perfect player you have, just deep lying playmaker who was just absolutely sublime. Like the way he manipulated the ball and the style of play, unfortunately, again, didn't really have the legs or the, the physicality and then probably the mentality to really mm. push himself on to. A Premier League level, it is a shame, but once you go across Daniel Farker, you're not coming back. Yeah, I think that Brighton away game was probably the moment it changed for him. That's what we've worked it out to anyway. So, but yeah. yeah, it seemed like there were words there. And then, <clears throat> like I say, Daniel Farker's pretty stubborn in his mentality. You look at like so Oliveira, Jerome, Russell Martin, all big, all big kind of names, Wes Houlihan as well. Big names are big characters very quickly out the door. Um, and then the disruptive ones like your Oliveira and Leitner, again, very yeah. quickly. Tribal as well, with obviously Anna Tribal quite disruptive, again, very quickly gone. So it's a shame, but, you know, you, he'll look back at his career, I think, and just be like, I've wasted opportunities here because it yeah. it looked like a great fit. It's just a shame because on his day, he was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And Marco Stiefman, um got a lot of time for Marco Stiefman just because how good he was at 18, 19. And then I... Almost over that summer, he forgot how to do his thing. I remember even at Anfield opening night, you're just thinking, blimey, he looks miles off the pace. But um, no, a very a good player for a couple of years for us. Yeah, good, really. Because the first season, it was like, where on earth is this guy playing like left back? I remember the one at Ipswich away where he's playing left back, but he did not play left back that game. It was left wing and we just had three defenders. But he was great. Got the assist for the Madison goal. Um, he loved the club. You could see that. And he put effort in, in every single kind of game he played and that number 10 role 18 19 wow tremendous yeah absolutely tremendous and was a real real help for Puki to get all the 29 Ooh. goals that he did everything went through him obviously that man city game where he played a key part like you say like that um, michael bailey said on our, on our podcast at the start of the season it kind of seemed almost between the years for Mark, marco he didn't yeah. really believe in himself and Obviously, this season's been difficult with the. Obviously, he had COVID at the uh, very, very start of the season, and then a, a really bad illness, which has seemed to have struck him down a lot. And you could see when he was playing, he didn't look right at all. Um, but still played a key part in that Swansea game. And he's going to be the most unique number 10 and probably player yeah. we ever see at this football club. It, it never made sense, but it, it worked in, yeah. in, in many ways. And I love watching him in 18 19. And it, it, it's, it's nice for Norwich to be able to cut the ties with him for the reason of him wanting to go back and see his family and and kind of get that that family sense of it again and just kind of leave it. And also on another side, like this kind of a couple of years ago, we, we signed a lot of these on for new contracts. We're not being that sentimental now. It's it's, it's kind of cut them out if they're not good enough. You could see a couple more go if there's interested parties that were also keen 18, 19. And now we're kind of looking at a, a squad that... If a you're new not, squad. If you're in that gap, like good for champ, not good enough for Prem. It's no longer, oh, we're trying to develop them. It's see you see later. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably the right thing to do after the, the limited, very limited success we had in the Premier League last time. So um, we'll put that there. But thanks to both Mo and Marco, quality players just uh, just didn't work out. But we'll leave it there for now. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again very soon with another signing. I'm sure there's more work to be done yet. Not quite there. But um, yeah, we'll see you when we see you. Take care. Cheers for watching.